This conference will now be recorded. How far you guys were able to follow me? How far you guys were able to listen to me when I was saying I don't know when I lost. Anyone can tell. So could you please share from the flash bin slash bash? Okay, that's it. So sorry, uh, come again. Sorry, say it again. What you're saying? Could you please share from the slash bin slash bash? Okay, I need to start from. Okay. Yes. Sir. Slash bin slash bash. Okay, fine. Let's wait for a couple of minutes so that everybody can join. Then we can start. We were having 19 person in the meeting. I don't see many people coming here. So let's start where we stopped actually. So uh, here we have included uh, 
hash uh, asterisk bin bash the bin bash is going to say that uh, this file should execute with uh, uh, bin uh, bash binary only okay we have several uh, uh, scripts binaries through which uh, a script can be get executed that is what we are required to mention in the first line either this script has to be get executed with sh or bash so if you give slash bin slash sh this script has to be get executed with sh shell script uh, as a shell, shell script if you are going to give slash bin slash bash this script is going to be get executed with sorry as a bash script so that's what the first line says in second line uh, we are giving this date as a variable to this timestamp and after that we are saving the output of the date to timestamp and after saving to the timestamp we are passing this as a in mkdir so passing a variable how we can give how we can pass a variable by using a dollar symbol so before the variable you are required to add a dollar so that you can say that this is a variable this is not a string so if you give if you give something like this it will become uh, it it will print here the timestamp only but uh, we'll face the last uh, uh, we'll face the issue what we have faced last time that mkdir the space four variable will get so how to make four variable into a string you need to give a double quotes here So that it can become one 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 string so after this we are required to copy the same thing into the string so this is clear what we are doing here okay and uh, when i say variable how to give a variable is you need to mention some name here and without space equal to and whatever you wanted to assign in the right side of equal to you need to give make sure you need not to have any spaces in between equal to in between before equal to or after equal to you are not required to have any spaces here so you can assign anything whatever you want so here our purpose is to save the date so we have saved the date okay so we see that it's uh when we execute we see that it's getting is executed and it's creating a folder now it has created a folder of 5214 so we'll see that we have that particular folder here or not so in that folder we have got a file copied d message so both the work is done correct here in one execution of a script both the work is done so same thing whatever you wanted to do you can do here let's say if you wanted to restart your system itself after copying the log you wanted to restart the system so here reboot and then close it so if i run this script it's going to after copying the log it's going to execute the system also so it's going to reboot the system also you can see that your system got rebooted so this is a example of a script how to create a script basic script yes there are several things comes into that script file if loop if uh, if else condition while loop do for do while loop for loop there are several things are there i'm not going to tell all those things as this point of time you just need to know the basics and basic is this i'll give i will tell some more things that how you can pass a variable how you can give a argument from command line itself to that script come on go inside
Okay, we have this back. So we'll see that whether we are able to get that or not. We were in testing for test folder. Okay. We, we can see that we have third folder also. So that is what uh, might have got created before the reboot. So, okay, that is done. So, what we wanted to do now is let's say you wanted to create a variable. Okay, I will create a simple file. Okay. Simple script.sh. Here, I wanted to print Okay, if I execute Okay So why this is green why that another one is not green can someone tell me We have two script script dot sh simple dot simple underscore script dot sh Script dot sh is green And simple underscore script dot sh is not green Can someone tell me what is wrong with that? Uh, it's not showing time when we created script dot sh. It's not showing time. What does it mean by that? Oh, you mean this? Uh... Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, dot 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 are uh, hidden files. Uh, it might have. Uh, it might it. have got. It might have got created on zero zero. Maybe. Okay. I'm the reason sure. for this. The reason for this not being green is it's not executable. We need to add plus X permission before we can execute this. CHMOD plus X simple script. You can see that both are green, correct? Yes, sir. And now we have plus X permission also. We were not having X permission here previously. So now X means we can execute this script also. So let's ex execute this script and see what it is printing. It's printing nothing. Okay, so what we have written? What we have written echo dollar one. So if we give dollar one, dollar means like we are trying to print a variable, correct? So printing variable here we are giving dollar one but we have not assigned anything to one correct so by default one will get assigned to the argument whatever you are going to give here hello i have given an argument by while running this script so this argument is going to be get assigned as dollar one and dollar one is going to be get printed here If I give two arguments also, it's not going to print the second argument because this is going to get assigned to number two. This is going to get assigned to number one and this then this name is assigned to zero dollar zero. 
let's say if I'm going to print so let's say if I'm going to print echo dollar zero dollar one dollar two that's it let's see what it is going to print in dollar zero it's printing simple script dot sh and dollar one it's printing hello it's dollar two it's printing there so this is how you can take an arguments from the command line itself okay let's modify our script the previous script itself to give the date from to give the date from your command line itself I'll give dollar one. I'll give dollar one. I don't want to reboot man. Okay, let me delete this line itself. Okay, you can see that. Uh, in script line in script.sh file i have modified the file to use the command line argument so i will give the command line argument and we'll see how it is getting executed so i'm going to execute the script.sh and temp1 i'm giving as an argument so this temp1 argument will go here and what this command will do mkdir temp1 it will create a directory with temp1 what the second line will do it is going to copy this file into temp1 directory okay let's see how it's happening you can see that it has created temp1 directory and in temp1 directory you can see the d message d message you are able to see the copied logs Okay, I'm giving this as an argument temp2. You can see that. Temp2 here and inside temp2 you can see that this is the, there is a log. Is it understood by everyone? what is the what is the difference and how we are able to take the arguments into a script from the command line itself and how to execute a script all those things you are able to see your voice is breaking a lot d d sir uh, what is d what, what do you mean it? by d d what do i mean by d sir I, you mean d message yeah okay d message it's the set of logs. no no sir mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay. it, it, temp one is there sir so the yeah, permissions yeah. is giving oh d yeah, is directory uh, the, d is directory for d is d is oh. directory yeah okay okay yeah okay thank you so uh, not is... able to understand uh, from temp1 and temp2 okay which Fine. you created directory yes yeah yeah so let's explain what is happening here in script.sh okay so in script.sh <coughs> I have modified the previous script and I have made that script to take the argument from command line okay so command line argument is 
whatever the argument we give before running the command so let's say if i'm running the command here sorry i'm running the script here and along with the script if i'm giving an argument let's say arg arg1 is a is first argument okay so this is going to get assigned directly to dollar one you need not to assign this variable okay and if if you know that this is going to get assigned to dollar one so just use the dollar one so i was using the dollar one for creating mkdir so mkdir what is inside dollar one inside dollar one we have arg one so what will happen if you if you run a command mkdir arg1 it's going to create a directory with the name of arg1 okay sir got it okay and yes it's going to copy the log in arg1 directory arg1. so the same thing yeah same thing what i was doing here is i was giving the argument here temp2 script.sh i'm running and i was giving that command line argument let's see if i'm giving temp3 argument so what it is going to do it is going to create a directory with temp temp3 and after creating a directory with temp3 it's going to copy this log into temp3 folder okay okay temp3 is created now you can see temp3 has the log d message okay anyone has any doubt here No doubts? Okay, that's great. Okay, let me finish one more topic. That's called uh, one more command I can say. Mount. Or not mount, let me finish cron tab first. Cron tab is Cron tab is maintaining a file and assigning that file to run on a particular given time. This is what the job of cron tab. Let's say if you want to run some job at a particular point of time then you can add that job in cron tab and you can execute that that job will run or that particular command whatever you have given will run at that particular time even though if you are not there okay so let me show the example okay uh Okay, let me switch to user test or I can give that no. We don't have cron tab entry anything. Cron tab hyphen u we can give the user name and then hyphen e option to edit the cron tab. Okay. 
I should be root before using this but if I'm giving this itself it should give me but it's not giving okay so vi etc let me see if I'm able to get from here okay yeah I'm here so this is what I wanted to show you guys okay i need to modify this file using root so i will switch i will go to root and then i will start modifying cron tab file so here you can see that whatever command you are going to write there is a format for that so the first here is for whatever you are going to see here this first star is made for minute like on which minute on which hour and which day of month and which month and which day of week you wanted to execute what command this is what you are required to give so let's say what is the date now so first september 1457 current current time is 1457 okay so i wanted to give to reboot the system at 1458 1459 let's say so i'm going to give 59 minute sorry 59 was the second So one four, one five is already there. One six. Let's see. One six, day of month, every day. Month, every month, every week. So if I don't want to mention a particular day, a particular month, or particular date, then I need to add star. So it means it's going to execute on every month here it's going to execute on every day but on every day what is the time it's going to execute on hour one and minute is six what command i wanted to execute i wanted to execute reboot sorry username also it gives but we can give the command also that's not a problem so we'll see how it's happening it's happening even or not let's see the date oh it's one six it's already passed so i need to give one seven so that we can see the changes one seven okay date we have one six fifty three let's see if it's if it's getting executed on one seven or not so what will happen at one seven our system will reboot then we'll see if it's getting executed if it's not booting it's means not executing uh oh it's not executing so minute is there hour is there it should work okay let's see this if this is working or not oh it's got rebooted because I have added that script to execute every minute. So before the system restarts, I need to, before the minute changes, I need to reboot the system else it's going to keep on rebooting. So uh, anybody understood that what has happened here?
maybe uh, my system will reboot all the time okay i left it let's see if i leave it it's going to reboot on its own or it will ask me to log in after some point of time after logging in only it's going to be get executed what is that so let me explain what has happened so last time maybe because of timing constraint oh you can see that system got rebooted again so it will keep on rebooting you will think that we have got a virus which is rebooting the system but actually it's not a virus it's our written script only which caused the problem sir we we can log in as a test user and change mm, cron tab is for everyone okay so let's give a try what do you are saying test okay i have logged in using test user correct wait for 5 seconds sorry wait for 15 seconds more sir how can we stop hmm okay let me explain what has happened first to everyone so we were having a minute then we are having an hour so i have given the time here time stamp sum 1 and 7 so there may be something wrong with the 1 7 so it might not be it was not executing what i have given now after that is a star it means at every hour and every minute you have to execute the script using root user and then what what script or what command you are required to execute reboot yep you need to execute this command reboot so what reboot will do it simply reboots the system so when it has to do every hour every minute so it means like if minute changes from 7 to 8 it will execute that script if minute changes from 8 to 9 it execute this script again if my minute changes from 9 to 10 it executes that again you are getting what is happening here and each and every minute it's going to execute this script or this command i can say so there are two ways to fix this we need to be in between this 9 to 10 minutes and we need to edit the file and remove that line that's one thing another thing i will tell you day after tomorrow or maybe on monday like how to debug when you are stuck with something how to go into single user mode and how to make the changes and then come back how to recover your system all those things okay so let's uh, see this quickly we will be in between 9 to 10 minutes and we'll edit the changes and then we'll come out of the cron tab file
But yeah. before I could log in, you can see that it's rebooted again. So either I do run a cron job, system CTL, cron job, or anything, it just rebooted. We'll come to that also. System CTL, not now. Some days later. Okay, what is system CTL? Why do we use it for? What is the purpose of that? Yeah, so it will not get executed. Somebody has texted me something. Okay, somebody asked me that if I can tell some of the topics which I will ask in the, inter uh, in the interview. So the topics name are whatever you have been taught so far. Just think that this is not your uh, regular interview. Think that this is the this is the way a real uh, HCL interview is going to happen, and you need to prepare whatever you can do. Okay, so you can see that system is not rebooted, even though date is changing. Okay, we have left for sometime but still it's not rebooting because we have removed the line there can be another way also we'll discuss that later okay so that's it for today